I'm now going to show you an example of how we calculate a Jacobian matrix. For this example, I'm going to use the spherical manipulator. I've chosen this for the example because it has both revolute and prismatic joints. I'm not going to show how we derive the forward kinematics, the homogeneous transformation matrices that are shown here because we have we've already looked at how to do that and we have these standard homogeneous transformation matrices already calculated for us so we're going to start from the point where we already have these matrices calculated in order to use these matrices to calculate the jacobian it's important for us to recognize what these homogeneous transformation matrices mean. Remember that in the homogeneous transformation matrix, the uh, three by three matrix in the upper left hand corner is the rotation matrix. In A1, this is the rotation matrix from frame zero to frame one. In A2, this is the rotation matrix from frame 1 to frame 2. And in A3, this is the rotation matrix from frame 2 to frame 3. We also have in these transformation matrices the location of the center of the frame. This uh, 3 by 1 vector in the rightmost column is the position of the center of uh, the frame relative to the frame before it. So in the notation that we used for the Jacobian matrix, this three by one vector is, <clears throat> is O1 or the uh, location of the origin of frame one relative to frame zero. In A2, the three by one vector here is the origin of frame two relative to frame one. And in A3, this vector is the origin of frame three relative to frame two. In our Jacobian matrix, we need to have vectors that are the uh, the origin of a frame relative to frame zero so in other words we need to get the origin of frame three relative to frame zero we can get that easily from these homogeneous transformation matrices simply by adding up these origin vectors. In other words, the origin of frame three relative to frame zero is equal to the origin of frame three relative to frame two plus the origin of frame two relative to frame one plus the origin of frame one relative to frame zero. I'll show that in more detail as we go through this example. Let's start by calculating J omega, the angular velocity component. Remember that this vector should have three rows because we're in three dimensions. And the number of columns it should have should be equal to the number of joints that we have. There are three joints in our manipulator, so we should have three columns. The first column, since it's a revolute joint, should be R times K. And this R is from 0 to I minus 1. I here is 1 because this is the first column. So this is the rotation matrix from frame zero to frame zero. 
Column two should also be R times K. K here is this vector zero, zero, one that I showed previously in the derivation. R should be from frame zero to frame I minus one. I, the column here, is two minus one is one. The third column is a uh, corresponds to a prismatic joint. So the third column will just be zero, zero, zero. Now let's expand these R, these rotation matrices. The rotation from frame zero to frame zero is the identity matrix. So when I take the identity matrix times the vector zero, zero, one, what I get is the vector zero, zero, one. Next, I'll take the rotation matrix from zero to one. I can get that from the homogeneous transformation matrix. The rotation matrix from zero to one is shown here. I'm going to take this uh, matrix and rep uh, reproduce it on the other page. Here I've written down R01 from my A1 matrix and the vector 001. I'm going to multiply this vector times this matrix and what I'll get out is a column vector of sine theta 1, negative cosine theta 1, 0. And for the third column, I've already figured out that that should be 0, 0, 0. And that's the end of my angular velocity part of the Jacobian matrix. Next, I'll figure out the linear velocity part.